these upcoming lessons, we're going to be talking about the essentials, the things that you really have to know to understand the fretboard, to start gaining that fretboard freedom that you want. Uh, hopefully this will begin some of your greatest aha moments, some things that you'll take with you through the rest of your guitar journey. So let's get started. When you pluck a guitar string, you're setting up what's known as complex vibrations. Now the reason you call it complex vibrations is because there are multiple vibrations taking place on the string at the same time. And actually, you can touch the midpoint, the point that's one-third the length of the string, one-fourth, one-fifth, and so on, and isolate those specific vibrations. So just to demonstrate that, I'm going to hold my finger above the 12th fret bar right here. That's the midpoint between the nut and the bridge. And when I touch that and then pluck the string, you'll see that the string actually stands still physically right in the middle. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to touch it. And you'll hear that the string continues to vibrate on both sides of it. And I'll prove that to you by then touching either side of this and you'll hear the string deaden. All right, here we go. So what's going on there is the string is vibrating between here and here and it's vibrating between here and here. Next, we'll divide the string into three equal parts by touching either above the seventh fret bar or the 19th fret bar. And again, the string stands still at those two points. So you've seen how the string stands still at the midpoint for the second harmonic, right? It's the 12th fret. And for the third harmonic, it's the 7th and 19th frets where the string doesn't move. Now this pattern keeps going. You've got the 4th harmonic, the 5th harmonic, and so on. Each time the string is divided into more parts. And the higher you go, the closer these points get to each other on the fretboard. Now, all these harmonics make up what we call the overtone series. It's that set of naturally occurring pitches that you hear when a string vibrates. Now, when I play this open string, you think you're just hearing one note, but what you're hearing is that fundamental note and all these other extra overtones. So why should you care? I'm about to tell you why. So let's look at the E major chord. I've got arpeggio flow pulled up right here. And you'll see that the notes in the E major chord are E, G sharp, B, and that's it. The overtone series produces the notes of an E major chord. The note at the midpoint, the 12th fret, is referred to as the second harmonic, and that's an E note. Then at the seventh fret, which divides the string into three vibrations, that's a B note. And then at the fifth harmonic, which you can set that one up by touching above the fourth fret bar, that's a G sharp note. That's the E chord because I'm playing a B, an E here, a G sharp here. I can prove it to you by uh, playing those same notes here. Your ear tends to want to match the notes that are produced in the overtone series. It's just the natural occurrence of those notes of the E chord. And in the case of the E, this G sharp happens right here. That G sharp is actually flat or lower in pitch than the fingered G sharp up here. I'll play this. You'll notice that this G sharp, when your guitar is in tune, is a little higher in pitch. You can really hear that those two notes don't match up. When you try to tune to a chord by holding a chord and moving the tuning keys, 
like this. So, so let's just say I'm strumming this chord and I want to change this G sharp so that it's just as pure as I can get it. That's pretty close to the Overtone series G sharp. If you listen to this. Now I've got my guitar tuned so that this E chord itself is just as pure as it can be. And it really matches what occurs in the Overtone series pretty well. But what happens now when I try to play a C? Way out of tune. Horrible. That's because this third string that I dropped down to try to get this E sounding real pure is now flat for the C chord. So why is that? What's happened in Western music is the octave was divided in 12 equal parts. Each one of these frets on the guitar is placed so that the difference in pitch from this note to this note is exactly the same as the difference in pitch from this note to this note and this note to this note. We've divided the octave exactly in 12 parts. But when we do that, the problem is the note that occurs here does not match the overtone series note. So the guitar needs to be tuned so that it matches the way the frets are laid out. And that's why if you tune your guitar by ear, or even using a tuner, it's a good idea to be sure and check your tuning by comparing each open string to a fretted note on another string. Before tuners, the standard way of tuning was to first get the sixth string tuned to a reliable source like a piano, and then hold down the sixth string at the fifth fret and play the next string and tune the next string until it matches this one. And do the same thing here because it's the same note as the open string. And see, that doesn't match. Then tune the second string to the note on the fourth fret of the third string. Then back to the fifth fret of the second string to tune the first string. Now the D chord should sound fine. The E chord should sound good. The G. The A. The C. So we find that spot where every chord will sound right. And you can't get there by holding a chord and tuning so that that chord sounds as pure as it can sound because of this phenomenon known as this equally tempered system. If after doing this, your guitar still sounds out of tune, you might want to take your guitar to your local music store or guitar shop and have them set up the intonation for you. Now, after you realize that the only letters used in music are A through G, you only have to know two more things to easily map out every note across the entire fretboard. We're going to get into all that in the next video because I'm going to explain to you how the guitar is laid out, where all of the notes are, how you can quickly find any note on the fretboard, and hopefully that will be another aha moment for you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.